Secretary General for Global Communications. I would like to welcome you to Women, Peace, Power, a live discussion with women photojournalists co-organized by DPO, namely the United Nations Department of Peace Operations, also by DPPA, which is the United Nations Department of Political and Peacekeeping Affairs, and UN Women with the support of the department I lead, the Department of Global Communications. This discussion is part of a series of events and celebrations around the photo exhibition, In Their Hands, Women Taking Ownership of Peace. The exhibition features 14 women peace activists in conflict and post-conflict settings. The lens has captured their stories in the Central African Republic, Colombia, the Democratic Republic of, of the Congo, Lebanon, Mali, South Sudan, Sudan, and Yemen. But beyond the location, what may, makes this exhibition different is that the photos of these courageous women peace activists, which you are about to see, are taken by local women photographers. These photographers are not only intimately familiar with the conflict and instability where they work, but also fighting to ensure that these stories are told, that these images are seen. Before we get started, I want to raise a few logistical issues. This webinar is being recorded, and the English language recording will be published on UN Web TV. Interpretation is being provided for Arabic, English, French, and Spanish. I take this opportunity to remind all panelists to speak slowly and clearly so that our interpreters can work effectively. During today's event, all participants will be in listen-only mode with their microphones muted. We will later open the floor for your questions. If you would like to ask a question, please ask it using the chat feature. You're also interested in the views if you are also interested in the views of a particular panelist, please indicate to whom you are directing your question. Before I introduce our guests, let us watch a video profiling these women photographers and their remarkable work for this exhibit. very interesting but like from this I can see the like first women who participated in the peace agreement in South Sudan and then it's very uh, I was very touched to see the uh, progress and the how the woman was involved in that progress. la case de la paix, elle est pour toutes les femmes. S'il y a des rencontres de paix, ça se fait ici à la case. S'il y a des querelles entre les communautés, c'est à la case que ça se fait. S'il y, si y a des querelles entre les groupes armés, c'est ici à la case qu'on parle. What an inspiring way to kick off our discussion today. Uh, as the, the film indicated, there can be no lasting peace without women. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce our panelists, Laura Rumanos, co-founder and executive director of Photoville. Photoville is a nonprofit organization devoted to educating the public on visual storytelling, connecting artists across the world and amplifying their voices. Photoville holds an annual outdoor photo festival in New York City, where the exhibition you just discovered premiered last September. I'd next like to introduce Mara Ajak, photographer from South Sudan. 
Maura Ajak is a freelance reporter, photographer, and camera woman from South Sudan. Through her photography, she highlights human rights issues such as sexual violence and elevates the voices of youth and people with disabilities. Maura's photos have been featured in Harper's Magazine, Al Jazeera, and the Associated Press. She has received numerous prizes for her work on peace, governance, and climate issues. Sammy Vasquez, photographer from Colombia, is next. Sammy is a signatory of the final peace agreement in Colombia as a former member of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or FARC. In 2014, she was involved as a communication officer in the Dialogue and Negotiation Commission in Havana that led to her country's peace agreement. As an ex-combatant, she participated in the disarmament and reintegration process in 2016 and now studies audiovisual production at Columbia University's Higher School of Public Administration. Next, I'd like to introduce Hana Hazas, Haza, a photographer from Yemen. Hana is a professional photographer and civil society activist based in Taiz, Yemen. Through her organization, Yazad Wahat, she recently launched a campaign calling for the reopening of the main road leading in and out of Taiz to lift the siege of the city. Welcome to each of you. It is so wonderful to have you join us with us virtually today. Let me first turn to Maura with a question. Can you tell us what you learned from capturing the work of women peace activists? And also, why did you want to be part of this project? Thank you, uh, Melissa. Um, I've learned a lot and uh, uh, my thoughts even been upgraded to see women, they are stepping from uh, being marginalized by the community and moving towards uh, a broad uh, space of uh, taking a bold um, uh, activities to participate in different um, activities that dominated uh, by a specific uh, uh, groups, for instance, um, and it had taught me even there are a lot of uh, hopes um, that it will be um, laying or becoming um, um, kind of a flavor for us also, like the upcoming generation and the other generation following, uh, to see how our women, they are writing the history of the country, moving from a conflicting country, uh, moving also towards uh, being a peacemakers and also uh, uh, or peace builders and giving other uh, or a new future also to young girls, despite uh, the, the culture and the harmful practices that have been practiced uh, for years uh, against the rights of women and young girls. Yeah. That's um, pretty incredible. So first women going from being marginalized and then writing the history of the country, as you said, and giving a, a new future to girls who have suffered so much. I know I've been to South Sudan. I know what uh, the kinds of violence that were aimed particularly at women and girls, and maybe we can get back to that uh, when we come back to you. But I just wonder if um, Sammy has any thoughts on what Mara just said. Do you see any parallels to the kind of work that you were doing? Yes, muchas gracias por la participación. Thank you for the participation. I know that within photography, the work has not been easy for women because this is a profile that has remained uh, very uh, sort of hidden for men in society. But we are being capable now of showing that we are empowered women that can contribute to peace building because without women, peace is not possible. Our support here is very necessary for peace building and to construct policies, helping society to correct these problems that 
have appeared within countries. In Colombia, we had the possibility of signing a peace agreement that is still underway. It hasn't been fully implemented yet, but it has opened the doors to previous combatants that were facing war before. And now from this position, we keep on building our country and we keep on working for a stable peace in Colombia. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, I mean, you are certainly an empowered woman, uh, one who is actively involved, but also actively communicating. And it's interesting what you said um, about the angle for women, that it's hidden for men and that it's up to the women to um, empower empower ourselves and take and take these um, actions for peace. Um, Hannah, I'd like to ask you if you would like to come in um, and tell us what you've learned from ca capturing the work of peace activists and also any reaction to what uh, Maura and Sammy just, just said. Photography, the photography profession was only confined to men uh, and now uh, uh, now women to be able to compete in this field uh, uh, that that she she was able to participate based on merit and now we have a great deal of female photographers not only special uh, specializing in the cell uh, weddings and so on and but they, they have become specialists in all domains and this was a turning point for the women Excellent. Thank you. I mean, maybe just um, if you want to go a little bit further and share just a bit about your work, um, what you've learned capturing the work of peace activists in Yemen. I think most people don't even know about peace activists in Yemen at all. What we see on our screens are images of, of starving children and horrific um, destruction. What, what can you, what have you uh, learned photographing peace activists and what do you want the world to see through those images? Photography is a mirror to many people that it's a mirror that is that is able to convey the suffering of people uh, to the rest of the world, Yemen, if it wasn't for photography and the media, our voice wouldn't be heard in the world and no one would know the extent of suffering that that the people, yeah, many people are, are going through. Photography has played an important role in conveying all this to the world and also shedding light on the Yemen and the Yemen as a country and its people and the, the suffering that they are going through. I think it's very interesting what you just said, that if it wasn't for photography, our voice wouldn't be heard. So it is, it really is photography, I think, in war. And we're seeing this in real time in the Ukraine situ situation. Um, it is the entry point for many people. Um, it is the image um, that can open up hearts um, and minds and, and tell a story and, and get people to want to learn more to want to know the story behind that image and to delve deeper um, and possibly to feel something. I think that's, uh, that's what we all want to achieve, or that's what you want to achieve through your photos. Laura, you've pulled these women, uh, I mean, you've curated and, and exhibited uh, these, the works of these women. Just specifically on what they've just said now, what, what would you like to uh, offer as a comment? I think um, what's interesting is that all these stories are very localized and they're very specific to those communities. Um, however, it's all universal. So us being here, I grew up in Australia, but I'm Lebanese. Um, so I have family who are still in Lebanon. Um, I, you know, and I think about New York City as such a melting pot. And so we had the exhibition in Brooklyn Bridge Park, and it's actually currently in downtown Brooklyn right now. But you have people from all over the world, all different types of folks, and they're actually, even though they may not relate uh, to what's specifically going in and all these women who are doing this amazing things and what's going on in these countries, 
they can empathize and they can see what's going on. And I even think about Yemen and also what's going on in the Ukraine. And I think I've been hearing people like they're waking up to what's going on in the world. And as we all know, these things are happening constantly throughout. And I think more than ever, visual storytelling and photography can actually illustrate what is happening. And that's one of the reasons why we've loved um, being able to facilitate and exhibit this work and the work from all of you, which is incredible. Indeed, and thank you, thanks so much again to Photoville for featuring this work and, and opening it up to so many people, um, visitors, uh, residents of New York City and people visiting. We do have actual tourists um, who have come back to the city uh, and to, to see these photos that, as you said, are localized, but also speak a universal language. Um, thanks. Um, I get maybe just to ask Maura and um, Hannah, just to the question about working in what's usually a male dominated industry. Um, did you face any specific challenges there and how did you overcome them? So first, Maura. Uh, the challenge is um, it's non-stop. Like every day um, I face new challenges or female journalists, for instance, they face new challenges. Um, at the beginning, um, you feel like you're not accepted within the, the, the field, but at the end it's, uh, it's the passion that I have. Uh, it's the dream that I have and the goals. Uh, no matter how, how much it will take, it won't stop me like the challenges and the harassment and uh, whether physical harassment or verbal harassment, I have to keep it going ahead. And um, uh, it wasn't easy, uh, but the tough road usually is to teach us how to, to upgrade and how to expose the, the positive side and how even to change the concept and change the narrative about uh, the, 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 the environment that we are living in or changing also um, the issue of gender equality or gender equity, um, how to move ahead, how to respect my rights, how to respect other women's rights and how to respect also other human uh, rights, yeah. So in a way you are, um, you are working on women's rights as you are demanding to be uh, treated equally in your profession that is normally male dominated um, and you have faced harassment, but you've gone through it and you're getting this recognition uh, from international media that are featuring your work and the awards that you've received. So I hope that locally you're also getting this, this recognition. Um, I am receiving locally. Uh, I'm happy even my male colleagues, they're also uplifting me in a way or another. And also people from the community, people from different sectors, even people from the, 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 the security sector, uh, because I've been working also giving some sessions about uh, human rights reporting and how to report about it and how to help uh, journalists also in terms of sensitive cases. Uh, it was back like two years back uh, I've been working also uh, under um, uh, Journalists for Human Rights. They were having an office here. And also they had introduced me to new era of how to cooperate uh, in tough situation with uh, different uh, stories regarding human rights, yeah. Thank you so much, Mara. Hani, how about you? How has it been for you working in this um, profession? Uh, the, the, the way the society viewed and the family and the community looked at us uh, was very, we had faced a great deal of difficulties as the men, women in Yemen, uh, by if we take into consideration the customs and traditions that the women are different uh, from the men and uh, about these challenges for me, uh, I, 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 I am very happy to have reached where I am now, but ha however, now I'm able to prove that the role of women, I was not the only woman out there, more than a female uh, photographer, we have enhanced the role of, of women in Yemen 
through the war by being able to convey message and uh, the message of peace to the community and enhance our role as females, uh, female photographers in this field and in other domains as well. Well, that's that's very much needed. I mean, Sammy, you already proved yourself as a woman um, in the struggle that you went through. Um, and but I'm wondering now, as a as a photojournalist, as a journalist, are you having um, any issues in 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 society in uh, working also in a male dominated field? We live in an era where, you know, all work except for domestic work have been created or conceived for men. Women have to struggle to these spaces, to these participatory spaces. As a society, we weren't capable to accept gender diversity and the skills of women. Women are faced with big disadvantages um, in the labor market. At times we get paid less than men for an equal job. We work on the same number of hours and we still get paid less. And this has generated this unequal standing in society. You know, sometimes People believe that we are less skilled or we are less knowledgeable or have less possibilities to develop in the field of um, our profession. And photography has always been difficult because it's always been male centric. And I believe that with this uh, work that we are presenting, we are helping a lot and to help society understand that women are capable, we are political subjects and we have a voice and can express ourselves through different means in order to counteract any offense taken against women and taken against society. We work for a group, for a society in general, for a collective group. We make problems visible, those problems that are affecting society and through our job we help solutions reach people those who are in trouble those who are in need i think that's that's very interesting i mean you say that you're also you know it is a struggle there is inequality in the labor market uh you know women i think this is also another laura a universal message um are um are facing um an uphill battle uh, to achieve equality, but also in this profession. But I think once you're in the profession, what you're also doing at the same time is uh, exposing uh, women's issues. And it is, in a way, it's a political act, um, what you are undertaking. So uh, Hannah, w please maybe expand on that. I mean, how are you, through your photography, exposing women's issues and thereby perhaps transforming the situation for women. It is really said that, that women behind a lens um, and also women journalists um, telling stories are telling s stories from a different perspective and, and exposing maybe the, um, not just the plight of women, but providing perhaps a, a different way of and a different entry point into what is happening than a male photographer or male journalist would. Hannah, do you want to address that? Uh, again, Soel, please. Could you kindly repeat the question for Hannah? Yeah. Okay, sorry, and maybe it was a little bit because we're working with interpretation and everything, but for you as a journalist, as a photojournalist, do you think that your photography is any different than the photography of a male counterpart? And if so, you know, what is different and what also are you trying to change through your photography? Uh, 
It's different as woman being as a woman is more committed in, in work. And also by working in that field, we generally enhance the role of women. So I maybe if I was to shed light on the success story of another woman, as we feel uh, uh, each other is suffering, so I will enhance her role and I will convey her success story to the community in, in a way that is different from the, the man, the, the, the male journalist will convey it. Maybe the male, we, we care more for details and, uh, and seek and uh, as we have the same background, we look for the suffering and the, these stories in a way that, that in a way that would shed more light on the women, their uh, suffering and uh, and the, the important role they play in the society. Yeah, but that's interesting. So you believe that that women innately feel people's suffering more and can identify in particular with women's suffering, um, but also that you can you can also highlight the important role that women play in society. I wonder, Maura, if you'd like to comment on that. Uh, the effective uh, roles that women are playing currently, it's... Um, we ask uh, the others to go on silent, please. So thank you. Uh, somebody is speaking in the background, the interpreter, I believe, the Arabic interpreter. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, the the current activities and, and and the roles that women are playing now it's uh, to give more awareness to go to the remote areas, uh, showing women the other space that they're supposed to utilize um, instead of being remaining in the dark side. Uh, usually, uh, some because of some uh, other challenges like uh, mobilities and uh, also communication barrier. Um, and it depends also on, on the other activities that women are supposed to do and to take advantage of the institutions that they run, whether name it if uh, there is a businesswoman or there is an activist or, for instance, like me as a journalist, we usually used to check what's my role here, what should I do and use the techniques and then also to help people to, to open their minds uh, in terms of knowing how to, to, to improve and have a healthy environment within the community and to have a healthy family at the same time and to reduce the, the, the negative um, um, cases or the negative uh, culture because uh, now people, um, the more you take your children to school, the less issues that you will have. Uh, yes, there is a new adaptation for uh, new habits, but it can be manageable. Um, for now, women also, they're trying to uh, do enough sessions. Uh, they can take their uh, notebooks and everything from town. They move to the remote areas for one week, sometimes for a month, dedicating their time just to, to, to help the community to understand what's happening and where are we currently. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Um, before we continue, I think we're going to do one quick last round uh, before we open the floor to questions. So please do, if you have questions, those tuning in, uh, do add them in the chat. I wonder, Laura, from your perspective at mm -hmm. Photoville, um, how do you think women photographers like our um, friends here should be supported to overcome the challenges they just described and also to be participants in um, in the peace processes? Well, first I want to say that it's pretty spectacular and it's quite rare and it shouldn't be rare, but the fact that a project like this, uh, UN Women and UN Peacekeeping, like they reached out to women who live, who are from these different regions, because traditionally, as my colleagues know, that usually a lot of places just, you know, call up the closest, you know, white guy from Europe to go in and photograph. And it's so common. And this is where you've all said that the difference is between a man and a woman, if the UN had hired men to take these photographs, we would have been seeing very different visuals. And I think one of the reasons that I've seen so many people from all walks of life here in New York engage with the photos more than just like walking by and just going, that's nice, really engaging because of who took 
those photographs, who were telling those stories. And I think that whoever is here listening today, and please pass this on, that I think in future, when someone says, well, it's too hard to find a photographer in Yemen. No, it's not. Hannah's here, you know, like that, like it is not hard to find amazing photographers, women photographers. There are thousands of them. And I think it just takes a little bit longer to, to look um, because I think that women take make up 51% of the population. And I think a lot of these stories should be told through the lens of a woman. Um, and so that's where I am very, I feel very strongly. And I think for us as an organization, we advocate for that with a lot of our partners. It was amazing that we didn't have to do this for this project um, where they said, oh, we've already like, we're like, well, they have to be women photographers. I'm like, oh no, we're already there. We're already, we've already identified these women. They're already started shooting. So I think it's not hard. And so that's why I would say like, even if it takes a little longer, reach out to organizations like us. There are also different collectives in the um, Women Photograph, Diversify Photo. There is a lot of different databases that actually can point you to the right direction to find women photographers or even just photographers in the regions that you want to document. Well, thank you so much for that, Laura, and also for noting that there are these resources like Photoville and other uh, photo collectives that really do want to capacitate uh, women photographers locally. I know for our part at the UN, who are you know, working to shine a light on uh, neglected and forgotten parts of the world, uh, where you know, the UN struggles to help people, struggles to get funding, struggles to get attention. Um, we just had the Yemen pledging conference a couple of weeks ago and only got one fourth of the funding that we needed to you know, avert famine in, in, in Yemen. Um, and a lot of that, what is needed in my view, as somebody who leads communications, is evocative storytelling. It's really think, thinking about those uh, who could help and thinking about, you know, why should I care? All I'm hearing are numbers, numbers of, you know, kind of mass suffering. But who, who's behind those numbers? And we really need storytellers on the ground. We need, we need those images and that, that will not just leave people kind of in despair, but I think as, as all of you said, also show the, show the resilience, uh, show the role that women are playing that, um, you know, not only in communities, um, but also as peacemakers. But I wonder if you could just comment, you know, how could photography contribute to peace um, and also elevate women's roles specifically in this area of peace and security. So maybe I can go first to um, Maura here. Uh, photography, um, it had improved the reaction of the people and then the feelings itself. Uh, for instance, uh, when we go to the remote areas with a certain organization or certain mechanism, uh, the moment you take a photo, you need to show to the person, this is how you look like. And they like the photo. And some other people will think like you're just taking photos. Maybe you're taking it for a negative uh, uh, interest. Uh, sometimes once they see it, like it's popping in a certain platform or online, with a positive side of it, then they will say like, wow, it's like changing the direction of how to think about photography. Yeah, the, the, the issue of uh, being scared of the camera, uh, it is there, it exists still, but it takes time uh, how we can also change uh, the, the, uh, the narrative and then also uh, the concept of the importance of photography. It's not only for the bad things, but it's always helpful. And uh, for children, for instance, we need also to teach them how to, to do photography. Uh, for instance, like in South Sudan, I would have like suggested we need a school, a holy school for photography to teach our children how to take photos and then to tell their stories because there are a lot of untold stories and beautiful stories. For instance, uh, children playing chess uh, in, in, in uh, IDP uh, camps, displaced persons uh, camps. 
um, they do some other activities uh, in flooding areas. Children, they do a lot of things or women also as well. Uh, who is there to tell their stories? If I'm not here, which kind of legacy that we are trying to leave for the community, whether in South Sudan or in Yemen or in Brazil or anywhere, which type of legacy that we are trying to give? Because tomorrow after tomorrow, our children also, they want to see what we have done. So we need to tell uh, a lot of things through the lens, my lens, my voice. Uh, we had a training like that under one of my mentors and it, it was really helpful telling the other side of the stories, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So empowering people to, to be their own storytellers, my lens, my voice, I like that. I wonder, Sammy, in, in, in the context of Colombia, um, you know, how, how has photography contributed to peace, if it has? Um, and is there any way that, that photography, journalism can elevate women's roles in peace and security? Through the possibility of fostering initiatives of memory and uh, peacemaking through the history of women or narrative of women, we've been able to position photography and to show through photography what's happened. And this has allowed us to reach in a clearer mode and contribute towards peace building. I believe that photography is not simply an image. I think photography expresses much more than just an image. When I get, when I watch the on TV, what's happening in other countries, cases of women, what they are going through, it hurts me as well as a woman, as a person. So I think that with my photographs, this message will get to other women in other countries, to other people that will realize what's going on. And it's very important to strengthen the role of photographers in each space where we can contribute towards improvement, improvement of social conditions and report what's happening in my territory in Colombia has contributed to peacemaking and peace building. There are journalists that have been reporting during war what has been happening in Colombia. Mind you, in Colombia, it was not easy. There were terrible events going on. It was very dangerous to report and community didn't want to be photographed. When you were about to take a photograph or a picture, the community thought it was for another purpose, a military purpose, and they didn't want to have their picture taken. So we've been working there where we've been quite ill-treated at times. Now things have calmed down and people are betting on peace. And we've done a big, big job with the peace agreement in Colombia. Unfortunately, there's still a long way to go. So as women photographers, we need to continue fighting, fighting by working shoulder by shoulder, showing what we are doing every day in order to contribute towards peace building, stable peace in Colombia and throughout the world. So it's very important to show this through photography. Mm, that's, that's very, very inspiring. Yes, photography is, as you said, not simply an image. Um, Interesting also that you said that your photographs can also connect women around the world um, because they feel this kind of universal language, but also anyone to see what, what, what is going on. Um, also, I think really important pointing out how difficult it is in hostile uh, situations like wars um, to, to get those photographs out um, and the dangers of doing it, whether you're a man or a woman, but the necessity uh, is so important. I think we're going to go now to the first 
question um, from the audience. Um, it's a question by Amel Oni Elbech. And the question is, are women photographers paid less than men for the same job and the amount of hours that they do? Hannah, what's the situation like in, in Yemen? Are you and your, your fellow women photographers and journalists paid less for what you do? Uh, regarding the payment, the, they used to pay less in, in the beginning. It's not a matter of uh, com uh, compared to men, it's com com compared to the situation. I think we've lost the sound from the source. Okay, I think we'll, we'll maybe come back to you. Maura, how is it in South Sudan? Um, it's different also. Uh, and um, it needs more research and you have to be sharp. Uh, which type of uh, photography or which type of task that I am assigned to and which institution as well. Uh, like cross-checking about um, the job that I'm going to do, even if it's photography, sometimes you might not get paid. Sometimes uh, you can get paid like after six months. Sometimes you do the job uh, fresh and clean. And at the end, you might not get also the payment at the same time. You might be ignored. And it's uh, sometimes low, honestly, uh, because people think camera, it's, uh, it's a, a cheapest tool, but it's not honestly, because it might be a two year salary or two years saving and you're trying to buy a good camera that can last based on your environment. Yeah. I think that's important. It also, we had a question, a follow-up question from Leigh Sanders about how important it is to have professional and costly equipment for the photographer and, and videographer. And, and is that a barrier? So what you're saying is you're not, you're not in this for the money because you're, the pay is erratic um, and the equipment is expensive. How are you overcoming this and how are you getting by, Maura? Um, uh, there is this uh, a backup plan always, uh, even if you're not going to pay me, but I will keep the photos. Maybe I will have a project to have an exhibition like Photo Valley doing. I have colleagues also, they do exhibitions like uh, even if it's unused uh, photos or used but not paid, uh, I can reuse it again, recycle it, and create out of it some topics uh, or colored uh, exhibition and showcasing like, uh, it's not about me, but it's about the other side of, of, of the people itself, um, or themselves, uh, and also about uh, the things that they're doing. And it depends also about the topic within the photo and also the facial expression. Uh, and, and, and some of the, 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 the cartoonists also, they, they like such photos to develop also new uh, cartoons on daily basis, yeah. Okay, so your photos have many lives. Um, I wonder, uh, Sammy, is, what is the profession like for a woman photographer in Colombia? I mean, you, what is the situation with equal pay and also how does one afford the equipment and the question again was how important it is to have. I mean, I think lots of people are just using iPhones these days. The quality of photography is great, but um, also expensive too for many people. But how how important it is for you to have um, really top professional equipment? Bueno, in Colombia, in Colombia when somebody hires a photographer they pay women the same as men but the problem we have is that women are less so they hire they hire less women than men no maybe out of 30 photographers five of them are women so it's more difficult to access a contract or an assignment through photography for women photographers in Colombia. It's difficult 
regarding equipment because you have to get yourself your own equipment. Each photographer assumes responsibility of affording her own equipment and they have to do it on their own. And an equipment is very costly. iPhones help, but it's not easy to get an iPhone with a good resolution because it's very costly. They are very expensive. Nevertheless, we try to obtain something that will help us achieve our purpose and capture an image showing what is happening what the situation is like in the country. It's very difficult, but we are fighters for peace. So we want to contribute to show through photography what is happening in our country. So we strive to do that. We fight hard. Thank you, Sammy. I think that you're speaking for all, all three of you when you say you are fighters for peace and you're doing this through your photography. So I think let's, let's go to one last question. Um, from Amel uh, El uh, Belg, because I think this is this is an interesting perspective that we haven't looked at. Um, we usually think that women are more comfortable if the photographer is a woman. Um, and is it true that women find it easier to de deal with women photographers? Are you able to enter more spaces? Uh, Hannah, how about you? I think in a society also like uh, like Yemen, I, um, I would assume that there are many spaces that only you could enter uh, that men could not. Uh, mm. Soon again, the question. Uh, the question is, are, can you enter certain spaces more easily as a woman? Do women feel more comfortable with you um, than if it were a male photographer? Uh, I understand the question. Okay, why don't I ask it to the others and maybe you'll, you'll get it when, when um, Maura answers. Uh, Maura, are you able to enter spaces okay. with women more easily um, as, as a woman photographer and where you would say, actually, no male photographer could ever get this access. Um, so I am actually quite privileged. Uh, it happens uh, because uh, as I've mentioned earlier uh, about the, the the imposing of culture. Um, some other people, with, uh, because of their tradition, they don't allow male photographers to just come in and then take their photos if they're doing a certain activities. And sometimes you will find like young girls, they're shy of having a male photographer among them. Um, some women also, they're doing the same, like they can find also, uh, uh, like it's a bit strange to have a male photographer among them because they won't feel um, comfortable or normal. It happened also me and my some of my colleagues were in uh, a greater before and uh, my colleague was telling me, Maura, you have to put the, 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 the microphone. You put it uh, for the lady. For me, I can't touch that woman because her husband or any other woman will come and complain. And I've told him, uh, okay, I will fix it. And then again, <laughs> the microphone wasn't working well. Then he had to come and try to fix it. And then another elder woman was like, what is this? She started like complaining about it. So we ended up telling the woman like, sorry, so we'll fix it. So I had to fix it. And uh, this is how now to get to know other cultures, how it is and how also to deal with such situation. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I wonder, um... Sammy, is, do you have any particular advantages uh, as a woman with the female community in Colombia? As women, we have many more possibilities of taking photographs of women because we feel safe and comfortable amongst women. We've had a profile of macho chauvinist men. So we try not to get close to them. So amongst women, 
based on what we've been through, we feel protected. We take care of, we protect one another because it's a sad story what happened to women in Colombia and people or women do not forget. And if this keeps on happening, it's very difficult for us to feel safe and comfortable with men because we are afraid of them because of their track record of matches. We don't want them to touch us. We don't want them to be close to us. So as women, we have to keep on working on changing this men profile sort of uh, leaving the fear behind so that society understands that we are women we take uh, we protect one another but men are also obliged to take care of us to look after us and to protect us i think it's easier to work amongst women based on the history of men in our society. Mm, that's a very strong message um, to, I think, start to wind down with. I wonder, Hannah, are you able to come back? Did you catch a little bit of that last round? And would you like to comment? Uh, of course. I feel I feel secure when I uh, when I am among women. So not all places uh, uh, are accessible for males. So especially in conflict time, we uh, the as as you know that uh, uh, other women can feel comfortable for uh, taking photos more than male photographers. Right. Thank you so much, Hannah. And uh, I'd like uh, now. I wonder if uh, Laura would like to come in and just offer some final thoughts and uh, and just uh, yeah conclusions of on what you've heard today. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with? I, I actually think that I think together as women we can obviously do everything, but I also think it's important, especially where it's like getting the men in this industry to also support to be allies and i think transparency is key and it's making sure the men that are your colleagues are advocating for you are also being transparent with what they're making and what you're making and also going maybe this isn't the right assignment for them and so it is about collaboration and i think that that is incredibly important and i also want to just quickly go back to the like having you know the very expensive camera and gear and ultimately that is like i think we're always feeling like we have to have the best but ultimately whatever takes the best photograph and works for you like it could be your phone it could be anything it could be like a fourth like a second hand a third hand camera that was passed down um because no one actually at this point, anyone who is hiring you doesn't care about the model of camera you have. It's about what you do with it. And I think that there are so many resources throughout the world where they are um, fixing up old cameras to make it accessible because that's what we want. And I think that it's about finding your community and finding people that kind of uplift and help you kind of keep moving forward. And I'm really grateful to be a part of this community today. So thank you. Well, thanks so much, Laura. And thanks again for, because uh, what, what photographers also need most is a place to publish, a place to exhibit um, and you know, to allow their stories through their images uh, to be told. So I'd really like to thank, I'm, I feel very inspired myself by uh, Maura, Hana, Sami, um, and thank you again dear audience for tuning in and for participating in this very um, inspiring discussion. Women, peace, art, photography, all brought together. Um, I invite uh, all of members of our audience, there's still time to visit the photo exhibit in Albee Square in Brooklyn, New York, virtually um, online, if you can't make it there yourself. 
It's, it's physically there, Laura, until the 31st of March, correct? Yes, downtown so, Brooklyn, Abbey Square. Okay. It's very easy to so get this, to. So this weekend, right, uh, it's time to go. Nice excursion to Brooklyn, see the exhibit for yourself, but also a link for those of you who are not in New York City. Um, a link to the exhibit is posted into the chat. So to everybody, uh, thank you again, wishing you a wonderful day or evening wherever you are and keep documenting um, our photographers. Uh, it's so important for all of us and the rest of the world to see.